Van Dyke Show. Starring Dick Van Dyke. Rosemary, Maury Amsterdam, Larry Matthews, and Mary Tyler Moore. Oh, Sal, you don't have to do this. I can manage. Oh, are you kidding? I love to set tables. It's about as close as I'll ever get to getting married. Oh. Hey, what made Rob pick a day like this for an outdoor barbecue? Well, I don't know. It was such a beautiful day yesterday. We never dreamed it would rain. Anyway, he loves the flavor of charcoal. Well, I wish he'd eat some matches or something or cook them because I'm hungry right now. Look, instead of complaining, why don't you go out there and help him with the steaks? No, come on. There's no point in more than one of us freezing. Oh. <laughs> Steaks are ruined. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. You better call Chicken Little. <laughs> what happened? Well, I, I couldn't get the charcoal to burn. I had to keep putting fire lighter on it. And you got some on the steaks? A lot. I can't put the steaks out. <laughs> I'm sorry, you guys. Oh, that's all right. I like Chicken Little. Besides, they may send over a cute delivery boy. Come on, kid. How do I look? Well, hey. if it is an old Pancho Petri. <laughs> I'm not Pancho. I'm Sonora. If you're a senora, you better have a talk with your father. He's Sonora, all right. There's a school pageant, and he's representing Sonora, Mexico. Oh, he looks more like an ad for corn chips. <laughs> Where'd you get all these things? Well, they're just some souvenirs from Mexico. Can I use this paper, too? It didn't make a great Spanish land grant. Well, you don't need that. Just that hand tool wallet will do fine. But, Dad! Why don't you run outside and watch the steaks burn? Again? Again? <laughs> Would you leave this lying around like that? I didn't leave it lying around, Rob. I thought you put it I away. Didn't. You said you were. Look, somebody found it. We'd like to know what's going on. Oh, it's nothing. Mm -hmm. I don't accept that. Hey, no, wait a minute. Uh, it might be embarrassing for certain parties. Oh, well, this is hardly a party. You burned the steaks. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing on television tonight. Come on, what is it? Let's yeah. have a little entertainment. Shall I show him, honey? You sure there's nothing good on television? Oh, come on, tell us. Take a look. Holy cow. Holy cow what? It's in Spanish. You don't read Spanish. Right there it says divorce, and divorce is a word I've checked out in every language. All right, Rob. What's this all about? Buddy's right. It's the divorce papers. Whose divorce? Right and Laura's. Those are legal divorce papers printed and supported by the Mexican government. No wonder they get along so well in divorce. <laughs> How do you like that? All these years he's been available and I haven't had a shot at him. <laughs> hey, hey, Rob, how'd this document get into your hands? Well, sit down, make yourself comfortable. I'll tell you the story. You mean to say that you and Laura actually tried to get a divorce? How'd it happen? Why? When? You know, everything. Come on. Well, it was right after we were married. Oh, that's good timing. <laughs> well, it was kind of tough for Rob and me to adjust in that first year. Well, it was tougher because we were trying to adjust to a place called Anchor, Texas. Anchor, Texas? Never heard of that. Did you ever hear of Opelika, Georgia? Oh, yeah. Well, one out of two ain't bad. <laughs> Come on, Rob, where's Anchor, Texas? Tell us about well, it. Well, I, I was there, and I don't know where it is. We'd been married about three months, I expect, huh? and I was transferred to this little town. We had a tiny little hot apartment. <laughs> Anything? Yeah, it's a little cooler. No, it isn't. Yeah, it's fine. No, it isn't. You're right, it isn't. Well, don't say it is. Well, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. It's going to spoil the pot roast anyway. Well, you like that? The pot roast has got it better than we have. <laughs> Boy, did you marry some big success. I promise you the world, and I give you Anchor, Texas. Well, darling, we're together, and... As long as we're together, I'm happy. Oh, boy, if this is happy, I'd like to see you sad. <laughs> I'm sorry. But just this heat makes everything seem worse. Well, we don't have to sit around here and swelter, honey. Let's go down to the PX. We can have a cold drink. Back to the boys again? Well, not only the boy. Well, not the boys. We can go in and have a nice, cool drink. Rob, I like Saul and Bernie. It's just that I see just as much of them as I do of you, and I'd like to see more of just you. Well, honey, I'll go along with that. What do you want to do? Well, I don't know. You want to watch television? No, it makes the room hotter. What about a movie? Let's play. Mm -hmm. One million B.C. Oh, still? How about a drive-in? A desert rat. <laughs> <laughs>
Hey, I know. Let's go for a nice, quiet walk in the desert. Hey, huh? okay. If we hurry, we can beat the sandstorm. And Saul and Bernie. Yeah. Wait a minute. They didn't say anything about coming over here. Well, they never do. But if we don't show off the PX, they'll be here. Well, honey, they're just trying to be friendly, that's all. I know. It's just that they still act like you're a bachelor. Well, that's not it. They know you don't know anybody here, and they just want to make you feel wanted. Darling, you're the only person I'm interested in being wanted by. <laughs> Listen, let's get out of here while we can, huh? Okay. Shake and a haircut. Too late. Come in. Hi, Saul Bernie. Hey, look at the lovebirds. Are uh, we interrupting anything? <laughs> well, well, as a matter of fact, Rob and I were just going to take a walk. Uh, too late. The dust storm has started. <laughs> Yeah, you know, we didn't see it at the PX, so we figured you didn't want to take the little woman out in the dust storm. So we came to you. Wonderful. I brought the cards. We're going to play cards. <laughs> well, we know how you hate to shoot craps. Yeah, and it's your house, too. You know, so what the heck? We figured we'd play cards. Uh, unless you don't want us here. Of course they want us here. Well, I, you know, just didn't want to feel I was intruding. We're not intruding. They need us. Right, Laura? Right. <laughs> All right, I'll get things set up. Okay, what do you got, Laura? Full house. Oh, Lord. <laughs> wow. Boy, this is your lucky night, honey. You cleaned everybody. Yeah, lucky. It's some little girl you got there, Rob. She ought to be in Las Vegas. <laughs> you keep that up, Laura. We won't play with you no more. Really? <laughs> I'm a little short tonight, Laura. I'm going to have to give you an IOU. Oh, that's all right, Sal. Don't bother. Listen, Sal Pomerantz never welches on a bet. I owe Laura 184 matchsticks. That comes to 91 cents. Uh, 92. <laughs> Pretty cute, huh? Watch the pennies, the dollars take care of themselves. You're in good hands, Rock. Hey, Laura. Come on, we gotta get going. Yeah, we don't want to wear out our welcome. <laughs> hey, well, look, there's another beer left. Oh, I'll drink it myself. <laughs> see you later. Right, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Yeah, okay. At, at the base. Okay. You're not mad, are you, honey? I'm solving good on the matches. Well, maybe you can win them back tomorrow night. Look, I'm sorry, honey. I just don't feel like kicking them out. Well, I don't want you to, Rob. I just don't want you to invite them over every single night. Well, I, don't, I can't be unfriendly about it. So you'll just let it ride? No. No, I won't let it ride. My guys, tomorrow I'm going to tell those guys not to come over here anymore unless I invite them. I'll just tell them they're not welcome here unless I ask them over here. Now, what do you think of that? What's the matter now? You can't tell them that, Rob. You'll hurt their feelings. Laura. Well, Rob, I don't know what to do either. I just... I like Saul and Bernie. I really do. But I'd just like to spend more time alone with you. Well, I want to be alone with you, too, honey. Yeah. Gee, I wish we could get away from this place. Laura, last time I asked for a transfer, they sent me here. <laughs> the next stop could be the uh, Amazon or something. I don't know. Rob, I just mean our marriage needs a vacation from the army. Well, we can't afford a vacation now. We could afford a three-day pass. Yeah. Hey, you know the Mexican border is only about eight miles from here. We could go down there and get a, one of those little uh, hotels with an air-conditioned room, right? Yeah. And dinner inside, and we could have bullfighting, right? Fiestas, wine, women, woman, <laughs> and song, right? <laughs> Bought a sombrero, ate an enchilada, and got a divorce. Close. Yeah, what's close to a divorce? My marriage. <laughs> All right, Rob, what happened in Mexico? Well, I was so excited about our vacation. We went to the nearest town, a place called El Diablo. Well, it sounds like a hot town. It was. Oh, Rob, feel that air. I can feel it. Oh, boy. Well, it's not the best hotel in the world. It's the best one in El Diablo. Oh, I love it. It's the only air-conditioned one in El Diablo. <laughs> hey, look at this. This hotel's got everything, all in one room. Sure it does. Look at that. Souvenirs, soft drinks, and divorces. Is that why you brought me down here? Oh, God. <laughs> I thought they could sell divorces right over the counter. I don't know. I've heard of Mexican divorces. I didn't know you could get them that way. <laughs> Well, come on, we better register. Hope they have a room for us. Don't worry, if they don't, we'll sleep right in the lobby. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, this is really Mexico. The bell's taking a siesta. <laughs> Anybody here? <laughs> Buenos dias. Hi. 
Kiro, 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 um, uh, we want a uh, quarto. That's either a room or a duck. <laughs> Which do you want, the room or the duck? A room. Oh, you speak English. Como no hablo inglés. What did he say? He said he speaks English. Well, why didn't he say it in English? Wasn't that English? You know, I get mixed up living so close to the borders. What's this? That's English. <laughs> Good, now I'm straight. Uh, what can I do for you? Well, we'd like a room. Okay. You're in uh, 135 and the senora is in 214. Well, um, I'll be in 135. Please, no arguments. They're both nice rooms. Well, I don't think he understands. No, I don't think you understand. You, we, we both wanted one room together. Oh, no, I tried that once and they broke all the furniture. Who? <laughs> the people. I don't even put them on the same floor anymore. But we want to be together. Together? You mean you didn't come here to get a divorce? A divorce? Oh, no. <laughs> Whatever gave you that idea? The only reason people comes to El Diablo is to get a divorce. <laughs> <laughs> We're hardly ready for that. We're still on our honeymoon. Oh, that's nice. That's beautiful. For one time, my hotel will be filled with kissing and hugging instead of hitting and punching. <laughs> and two chairs at one table for a change. <laughs> oh, you make me so happy. For you, the best accommodations in my hotel. Well, thank you. We would like the finest. Uh, how much uh, are they? Oh, for you, my little lovebirds, the best will cost no more than the worst lousy rooms. <laughs> uh, follow me. Oh. What's the matter? Take your bags. <laughs> The bed. Well, just to make yourselves comfortable. Uh, you, uh, you said something about the finest accommodations. We call this El Cuarto de la Felicidad. I don't think a fancy name's gonna help with any. <laughs> this is the room of happiness. Oh, isn't that nice? Did you ever hear of El Gordo? No. The fat bandit. You see that bed? He slept there? No, he died there. <laughs> He was a terrible man. Boy, were we happy. <laughs> well, don't worry, honey. He probably changed the sheets. <laughs> well, uh, excuse me. I'll let you two lovebirds alone. Now, is there anything else you want? No. Well, you could turn on the air conditioning. It's on. <laughs> I, don't, I don't feel anything. Well, to feel it, you have to go downstairs. Well, in the lobby, it says air conditioning. See, the lobby is air-conditioned. Didn't you feel how cool it was down there? This uh, room isn't air-conditioned, is it? If it was air-conditioned, would it be this hot? <laughs> you silly billies. <laughs> <laughs> well, El Gordo sure picked a lousy place to die, didn't he? I think the bed killed him. Come on, we're alone together, and that makes everything beautiful, right? That's right. <laughs> Right, honey. You know what we're going to do? What? We're going to get all cleaned up. We'll go out and we'll do a little shopping. Good. We'll come back here in the evening. We'll have a nice meal down in the air-conditioned lobby. And then we'll go for a nice, cool stroll in the moonlight on the desert. I'll do my Andy Russell impression. Oh, would you? You're going to have the best time you ever had in your life. Oh, me too. <laughs> what do you say to opening a window? It's warm in here. I say that would be vital. Yeah. Hey, I think we got a room with a view, honey. That looks like the bull ring down there. It's a big bull ring. <laughs> Did the lovebirds enjoy the dinner? It was wonderful. Very, very good. Listen, we'd like to take a little stroll on your desert. You picked a perfect night. There's a full moon. That's very... Very, how do you say, uh... Romantic? No, practical. <laughs> practical? You'll have enough light to see the snakes. <laughs> snakes? Snakes, iguanas, lizards, gila monsters, you name it, we've got it. Is he serious? Are you serious? You're gonna see for yourself. Hey, why don't you stick around? The entertainment is coming. Honey, why do my legs are just a little sore. Yeah, mine are a little shaky, too. <laughs> Stay here. Yeah, it's cooler than our room, anyway. Besides, the entertainment's coming, right? 
Here they are. <laughs> After midnight. Boy, some fiesta. Wasn't that great, honey? Great. <laughs> Buenas noches, Roberto. Hasta la vista, eh? Buenas noches. <laughs> Maxine says that if you want to dance with us some more, come to the Red Fox. It's just across the street. <laughs> <laughs> Buenas noches. Yeah, Buenas Hey, caballero. Caballero. <laughs> <laughs> There's such... Warm-blooded people. <laughs> oh. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, boy, that was something. I lost track of the time. You know, you've been dancing and singing for almost an hour. <laughs> no, you've been dancing and singing for almost an hour. <laughs> Honey, how's your foot? I'm sorry about that. No, it's all right, dear. It's fine. It's fine. Gee, I was so busy there doing the flamenco, I lost all track of the time. Yeah. Uh, Maxine is quite a senorita, isn't she? Honey, you mad about Maxine? No. She sure looked like you were. Laura. <laughs> I'm sorry. Robert. No, I'm sorry, honey. Here I was having all the fun, and the whole idea of the trip was for you to have fun. Well, why me? Well, I mean, you know, you were the one. The one who was? Well, you will. Hey, look, tomorrow's going to be very, very different. You know what I want to do? Take you to the bullfights. Just you and me. Nobody else. I'm not going to talk to anybody else. And I'm not even going to say ole. <laughs> It'll just be you and me. <laughs> Well, the next day, we went to the bullfights, and Laura was less than thrilled. It's probably just the heat, anyway. No, no, Robert, well, it's not the heat. It was the bullfight. Well, did, didn't she even like the music? No, no, I don't like the music when it accompanies the... Yeah. What it accompanies. I'm sorry, honey. No, Rob, I'm the one who should be sorry. I just ruined your whole vacation. No. This heat sure isn't helping anything. Why don't we go down to the lobby? No, I, I really don't feel like seeing anybody. Yeah, I don't believe... You want to go to a movie, honey? Well, gee, we can go to a movie back in Anchor. Yeah, you're right. How about a little walk on the desert? We, no, you don't, you, you're afraid of snakes, I know. Well, so are you. Well, I'd go if you wanted to. Well, sure, you're just saying that because you know that I don't want to go. Well, what are we going to do? Well, I, well, what do you want to do? It means it's cooler in the lobby. Why don't you get to the lobby? What does that mean? Pedro, Luis, and Laverne were tuning up. Maxine. <laughs> you noticed. Well, at least it's more fun down there singing with them and... Than sweltering up here with me. Oh, boy, the way you put things. <laughs> I didn't put it anyway, Rob. I just finished your thought. No, you, you finished what, what you thought was my thought, that's all. And just what does that mean? Doesn't mean anything. Doesn't mean anything, I... <laughs> That ain't your, your fault. And what does that mean? Nothing. I did nothing at all. I mean, nothing is ever wrong, ever. And just what does that mean, Rob? Shave and a haircut, two pets. I know what that means, Rob. How could you? I didn't. Well, somebody did. Well, I didn't. But if you think I did, I should have. And I, I, maybe I will. Shave and a haircut, two pets. All right, Rob, just open the door and let your friends in and me out. Hey, Rob, Laura, but you're surprised to see us, huh? No. Where you going, Laura? To the desert. Well, wait up. We'll go with you. Shut up, Saul. <laughs> Laura. Where have you been for the last 
two hours. What difference does that make to you? You've been right here most of the time. You've been right here? I thought you were out with the snakes. I've been worried. I've been worried sick about you. Is that why you're yelling at me? When a man thinks his wife is out with the snakes, I, 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 I'm darn right I'm gonna yell. Oh, Robin, how could you invite Sol and Bernie here? I did not invite them here. They just found us, but you should be glad they did. I couldn't comb that whole desert by myself. Well, if you hadn't invited them, I wouldn't have been in it, and you wouldn't have had to comb it. Oh, twist it around. No, I wouldn't dare try. You do a much better job of twisting things than I ever could. Like when you said you didn't invite the fellows. Oh. Are you calling me a liar? No, I'm just saying you're a much better-than-average twister. Can I thank you? No, nothing can help us. Well, that's why we're here. I swear I didn't invite those guys, but don't don't sell them short. They're worried sick about you. They're right right now searching, combing every bar in this town. Bottle by bottle. Uh, could I have your names, please? Rob and Laura Petrie. That's a pretty low thing to say about your search party. They're a great search party. Everywhere we go, they find us. How long do you marry? Three months. Oh, look, you ran out on me. Don't forget that. For two very good reasons, Saul and Bernie. They happen to be my best friends. Some friends. How about Maxine? Laura, you're being pretty childish about this. Rob, that's cruel. Cruelty and childish, that's the grounds. Those are two of the sweetest. What grounds? The grounds for divorce. What divorce? What divorce? This divorce, your divorce. That's our divorce? As soon as I get the grounds, and ten bucks. Well, I didn't come over here for a divorce. Whatever you say. But if anyone ever sounded like they wanted a divorce, it is you. Well, I didn't come over here for a divorce, did you? I didn't come over here at all. I followed you over here. Now you're going to make it my fault. Hey, hey, Rob, you found Laura. Great. Can I see you for a minute? What is it? Well, while we were out looking for Laura, Bernie got thrown in jail. Could you <laughs> let me have ten for his bail? Well, I guess so. What, Bernie, what were, where was he looking? I'll tell you later. Thanks. <laughs> well, there's your friends. They won't even let us get a divorce alone. Oh, so you do want a divorce, huh? I didn't say that. Well, is that what you want? Is that what you want? What? <laughs> if you want one, I want one. That'll be ten dollars. You want me to give him the ten dollars? Do you want to give him the ten dollars? Do I? <laughs> I haven't got ten dollars. <laughs> I gave it to Saul to bail Bernie out of jail. You gave your friends our divorce money? Well, it just so happens that our friends need our divorce money worse than we need our divorce. What? Wait a minute. Our divorce money? Oh, Rob, divorce money? Please, you are getting a divorce. This is no time for argument. Well, the argument's over. We're not getting any divorce. Who are you, anyway? I'm your lawyer. Oh, well, you ought to be the first to know, then. We're not getting a divorce. I'll make it easy for you. I'll give it to you for five. For five dollars. Nobody can afford to be without a divorce. We can. Can't you see that we're in love? You could have fooled me. <laughs> Honey, look, I, I swear I didn't tell those guys where we were. I was as surprised as you were. You gotta believe that. I do. I do believe you, Rob. I just have to get used to sharing you, that's all. And don't get used to that. I don't want to be shared. And I don't want to get a divorce, either. But if you get a divorce, then sometimes you'll come and see me. The form is filled out. Or we wouldn't go to anyone else. <laughs> Listen, I'll make it easy for you. Here, take this. Whenever you're ready, fill in the grounds in ink and mail it to me with $10. I'll stamp it and mail it back. Thank you. That's very kind of you. Hey, how about a nice souvenir to remember your trip? Let me take your picture. I'll be a fool. <laughs> Well, so like I said, these divorce papers are nothing more than a souvenir, right? Oh, those things are as valuable as our wedding license. What valuable? Pickles may keep our wedding license in a shoe shine kit. Well, you'd be surprised how valuable that paper is to Rob and me. See, anytime we have a serious argument, why all one of us has to do is just fill in the grounds. Yeah, you'd be surprised how many arguments have been ended by those papers. Yeah. Hey, buddy, you could use one of these. Not necessarily. Look how many times the grounds have been erased. <laughs> hey, Rob, does that include the one last week when that little ballet dancer broke her foot? You know, the cute girl, and she insisted on you taking her home? Buddy. Hey, where? Oh, the, nothing, Laura. She, she was a, one of those pushy girls. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah that's right. Uh, yeah. Mel took her home. Yeah. That's right. What was her name? <laughs> Give it to me, buddy. Sharon Shore, that was her name. Very pushy little dancer. Absolutely crazy about me. Fill it in there. Sharon Shore? Uh -huh. We'll find about as soon as Buddy and Sally go. Don't forget to put down Pushy Dance. Pushy Dance. Oh, yeah. Yeah.